Okay, here we go with the GP2X Wiz review, which, yes, is now actually going to happen. A uh, little bit of backstory for those who didn't see the previous video. I ordered a GP2X Wiz from www.gp2xstore.com. The screen went out in about two weeks, and they refused to uh, even communicate with me about warranty, repairing, even to charge me to repair anything. Well, um, I got in contact with the Game Park Holdings, the manufacturer, and they fixed it for free for me. I did have to ship it to Korea, but I got it back good as new. So, um, thank you, Game Park Holdings, uh, for you guys looking to order one of these. Don't order it from gp2xstore.com. Look at, like, uh, play-asia.com. I believe they carry it. You might be wondering, why am I reviewing this now? Its successor, the uh, Canoe, has come out. The Pandora is out in small quantities, and they're ramping up production. Why worry about a Wiz? Well, here's why. With this being a uh, now discontinued product, it's going to be a little cheaper. And um, the software lineup, all the people who program software for it, they've made some good stuff for it. It's at its peak software-wise, which the Canoe and, to a lesser extent, the Pandora, they're still working on it. So um, let's get this review started by checking out some system specs in this thing. It uses a Magic Ice Pollux system on the chip as its primary chipset. The uh, CPU is a 533 MHz ARM 9. Uh, some people claim you can overclock it to, eight, to uh, I'm sorry, 900 MHz. I've only had success overclocking it to around 800 though, which is still a pretty good overclock. It includes one gigabyte of NAND flash storage, however, it's got a SDHC slot, so you can add a, you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, or 32 gig SD card. has 64 megs of RAM. It's got a Linux-based OS, a USB 2.0 connection, internal rechargeable battery, a 320 by 240, 2.8 inch organic LED screen. And the physical size is 121 millimeters wide, 61 millimeters high, and 18 millimeters deep. So, um, not too bad of a handheld here. Um, for video, it supports AVI and DivX and MP4. Uh, for audio, it supports MP3 and WAV. Uh, for photos, it supports JPEG, PNG, GIF, and bitmap. So, um, let's take a look at it. Uh, it's actually pretty nice whenever you first get the box. It comes in a very nice box. Pop it open. And that's immediately what you see. Open the flap. And you've got some pictures of some games. A CD, which honestly I've never used. I've just gathered up everything online. And a, a small multi-language manual here. So uh, the presentation was really nice on the box. I liked it. As far as the system itself, it does not come with the hand strap. But uh, there's the front. The uh, buttons there on the right side are kind of shaped like another D-pad, but they actually work out all right. They're a little spongy, but other than that, they work fine. It's got like an Oreo look, black, red, and then black again. On the bottom there, in the middle, you've got your USB charging port, volume up and down buttons, headphone jack. This side here is your power on off and your LED. The top has your left and right triggers as well as your SD card slot. Just pop it in there. It clicks. It stays up about two millimeters or so. Not bad. Nothing that's going to risk anything. This side just has the uh, wrist strap. Back of it, the uh, battery has two screws holding it in. And they're pushed there and it unlatches the battery. Uh, the finish, I don't know if you can tell from uh, the camera here, but it's a black, but it's got these silver specks in it. Quite nice. I like it. Also in the front, bottom left and right, are your uh, speakers, which, unlike the canoe, the speakers in this model are on the front, which I much prefer. So we power it on real quick. There's our GPH logo. Followed up by the Wiz, whatever you want logo. Just another moment. 
and we're up at the screen. Now, one of the nice things about this is that it does use an organic LED screen. Uh, similar technology is used also by Microsoft Zune, which means that the black appear this nice deep black, not like a dark gray. The colors are really vibrant. There's our LED at work. <laughs> it also turns red when charging and powered off and purple when charging and powered on. Uh, more or less, you get that box with the manual and everything, the whiz, and the uh, charging cable here. It does use a uh, proprietary port, you can see there. But it is quite a long cable, as you can see. Right? Really a good-sized cable. Now, some accessories to pick up. Uh, you can pick up what they call the accessory kit, which comes with that strap there. It also comes with a telescoping stylus, which I don't believe I mentioned earlier, but it is a touch screen. There's our stylus actually extended out. It also comes with an SD card holder that's supposed to latch onto your strap, but honestly I didn't care much for the SD card holder. I thought it was kind of rubbish, to be honest. So it got pitched. And then the uh, Wiz case. This case is quite nice here, made out of leather. Okay, a little Wiz logo on the corner there, open it up. There's a hard plastic there to uh, hold your Wiz into place and protect it. There's a nice holder there for the uh, stylus in the middle. And on the side, you've got room for four extra SD cards and then two other pockets up here for business cards or whatnot. And the whiz just pops into place, like so in the case. Uh, you can play it like this, but it's not incredibly comfortable, and this always tries to flip up in place. You kind of need to keep a finger up to hold it. I usually just pull it out to play, to be honest. And you can't charge with it in the case unless you've got this flapped open. Uh, it is magnetic whenever it shuts. But uh, overall, you get that with the accessories, and you've got a very nice, very small, extremely portable handheld emulator system. Let's pull this back out now. Go over the uh, menu system real quick on this lovely low-resolution camera. Uh, first icon is SD. More or less when you go in there, if you have shortcuts programmed in, They'll come up in the Wiz Games menu. Um, a lot of the games, they have shortcuts already made, or you can make your own. They're real easy and simple to make. Nothing real hard at all. Next one is built-in games. This is games on the uh, built-in flash memory that come with it. You get Animatch, Boomshine, Maraid, Square Tower Defense, Telltale, and Wiz Turn. Now, some of these games on the latest firmware, they're kind of iffy. Some don't want to work as well as others on the newest firmware, which is 1.26. But 1.26 enables a special feature to where if you get a gender extender cable or a gender changer cable for the port down here, you can actually use a uh, USB Wi-Fi stick to get Wi-Fi. Which, um, if you have Qtopia, which is one of the apps you can get, you can install Opera through Qtopia. And then have a small web browser add-on. A uh, third icon is Flash. Um, you can more or less play some SWF files. Comes with a few educational titles. Mm, not much to really care about there. Entertainment. You've got video, flash video, music, photo, uh, sound recorder, uh, tools like a calendar and whatnot, an ebook, which is like a text reader, and a comics. Launcher is stuff that's on the SD card. We'll go over here in a minute. Then your settings include auto run, your language, screen brightness, your screen off time, which you do want to keep this on set for 60 seconds. What that does is that it powers off the screen if uh, no input's been pressed for that amount of time. It's probably a good thing because uh, the one problem with organic LED is that they do have some problems with burn-in. 
ketone volume, your USB host, system information, clock, TMO, touch panel, and your wireless LAN settings. Of course, here's what we care about, the emulators. Right now I have installed Alex Kid 2X, which handles Game Gear and Master System. Final Burn, which uh, handles some arcade games. FCE, which is an NES emulator. Game Boy Advance SP, which is of course Game Boy Advance. MAME. Uh, oh Boy, which is a Game Boy emulator. Open Tire Ion, which is a great shooter game homebrew. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Tyrion, it's, it's not exactly homebrew as much as it is a port. Pico Drive, which is a Sega Genesis and Sega CD emulator. Qtopia, which is kind of like an office app, but also has that nice web browser edition I told you all about earlier. Mario War, which is a killer piece of homebrew. Uh, Super Nintendo emulator. I think it's a uh, Pocket SNES. Temper, which is a uh, TurboGrafx-16 emulator, and Waint, which is like a painting application. A 2600 emulator, 7800 emulator, and uh, a 5200 emulator, and an Intellivision emulator. So as you can tell, I've got a ton of emulators loaded up, and uh, that's what the next video is going to be based off of. <clears throat> next video is going to be a bunch of the emulators in action. So we will uh, see you next time for part two of the GP2X Wiz hardware and software review.